Hey, welcome to Bear Mountain today. We are planting our glads. Um, this is the second box we're going to be planting, but we thought we'd show you how we do this in a no-dig basis. And it's really quite easy and doesn't take too long. There's just a couple of steps, so let's get started. Okay, one of the first steps we do is we treat these bulbs with some mycorrhizal inoculant. Uh, this is an all-purpose soluble, which we use on uh, just about everything except brassicas. And um, it just helps the roots form a little bit better relationship and helps get a little bit more resilience when it comes to moisture as well as uh, getting more nutrients out of the soil. It's really pretty easy. Well, hello, Mr. Webb. I guess he approves. Anyway, it's just about, uh, ends up being about a tablespoon and a half in a five gallon bucket. Simply put it in, and then we fill it with water. Now we'll put about three to four gallons of water in here. It takes a couple of seconds for it to fill up. And the whole idea is this hose is with the nozzle on it, it's kind of agitating it a bit. So it's making it mix in pretty thoroughly. And there we go, that's about right. Okay, uh, the next step, we'll start with our first group of glads we're gonna plant. This one are uh, mini salmons and reds. And we don't give them too long of a soak, but we just make sure that they're totally coated. Soak in the water for a few minutes. Okay. Looks like you're washing them, it's sudsy. Yeah, it's a little sudsy, but that's just from the agitation. So let's talk a little bit about the bed itself. What did we do to prep it? Um, this bed was tarped all winter long. Uh, we put compost on it in the fall and then we tarped it and last year the last crop on this was in uh, no anemones and uh, then we cropped those guys out about two weeks ago and cropping them out was simply just pulling them out um, they're kind of a really a surface bulb plant so they came out really pretty quick and some of the little stumps you see in here are still some of the zinnia stumps from uh, last season but that's okay they're just rotting away we wetted the bed down thoroughly, and uh, what we're going to do now is just just lay um, the glad bulbs out, maybe push them in a little bit. The ground is real soft. We didn't do any forking or anything like that. And um, that's the next step, is we just lay them out. Then, after they're all laid out, the next step is we cover them with compost with about two inches of compost on them. So let's lay them out, and we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, we've laid out um, all the glads. Now, if you really want to be a stickler, I suppose you could use some kind of grid mechanism or something like that, but this is all just done by hand and by eye. So it's not exact, but there's roughly a couple inches between the plants and a couple inches between the rows. We've got about four different varieties in here that we're gonna be doing. Some of them, like on this end, are minis, and on this end are there more um, medium size and so we try to make sure everything was kind of grouped uh, together the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna put about uh, two inches of compost over the top so it'll be about that thick these are just kind of gently pressed into the soil and then uh, we'll lay our irrigation lines down and then as the last final step and this is just because we're using uh, what we found with urban waste, green waste compost, is that it tends to dry out. And when it dries out, it tends to have a problem with being um, 
hydrophobic, meaning that until it gets really wetted down again, it'll repel water. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use about a half inch of rotted hay over the top to conserve moisture from the sun kind of baking the top of the compost so it'll keep it damp. Um, it's not, the idea isn't to keep it wet, but just damp enough that um, these guys will take off and they'll grow right through that compost and right through the hay. Um, this time of year, our climate, this may not work in somebody has a wetter climate, like if you're living at the coast or something like that, you might have a slug issue with if you put hay out, and I can get that. But in that case, you're probably also not gonna have an issue with the compost getting baked and dried out. We're kind of in Western Oregon approaching our dry season. So typically as we wind down May and go into June, um, we get less and less moisture. And then by 4th of July, miraculously July 5th, we go pretty much rain free until almost Labor Day. And that's pretty much a normal year for us. And so everything on this bed is gonna be uh, controlled by irrigation and by mulches. So that's the whole reason behind the straw too, is not just to conserve it during the germination phase, but also to kind of give it a little bit of thermal protection as these glads grow up until um, they're gonna be fairly tight. At some point they'll be shading it pretty good, but that's the whole concept behind it. Like I said, if you're in a damper climate, probably don't need to do that. In that case, you would just use your compost over the top and you'd probably be good to go. So. Let's put the compost on, and uh, then we'll put the irrigation out and put the hay on. Let's do it. Okay, one of the last steps after we shovel the compost on is just make sure it's kind of evened out. I kind of got lazy and uh, left my rake down below and I'm looking at this box going, I bet I could rake this out, smooth it out with my hand faster. So this is something, don't do this at home kids. Get the right tools lined up first. That was my mistake. Anyway, we just kind of smooth it out a little bit, make sure that it's pretty much even, a um, couple inches over the bulbs. All the way through always tends for me I, I don't know if it's like this for anybody else but when I'm on shoveling something into something it always seems like uh, where I was standing closest to as a thicker layer than than uh, where you're throwing it to where I'm throwing it to so wouldn't the having the rake up here be also part of leaning out your farm oh man you're gonna make me feel bad sorry dear <laughs> yes, I read Ben Hartman's book, but I'm just not very good at it, man. <laughs> I do like the idea of having tools on both spots when you have half of your farm is down below you. Yeah. And the other half is way up above. There's a lot of truth to that. It's, it's a lot of walking. I mean, there is money in tools, <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot more money and time wasted wandering around looking for them, too. Okay, one of the things I wanted to point out here is we put the drip lines down. Now, these don't look like uh, drip tape because they're not. These are quarter inch micro um, line, inline emitters in it. They're spaced every uh, 12 inch. And you can do a run on these guys, typically 25 to 30 feet on an individual line um, hooked to um, a half inch or three quarter inch header. And we've used these things, they're amazingly resilient. Whereas drip tape, you might get one, two, maybe three years if you're treating it real well. Uh, we've been using these same um, no clog, uh, quarter, 
inch lines for this is probably our 15th year um, so they have lasted a long time occasionally you get a line that's blocked and you have to change it out or more likely in my case I do something and I damage it like it gets cut or something like that and I have to splice it together but uh, we'll talk more about irrigation in another video coming up as we do in the kitchen garden we have a lot of irrigation to fix there it's going to be using a similar system as this so um, stay tuned for that one the hay this is just stuff that from last year's hay crop and it's uh, going to take a little bit to uncompress it but we're just not we're not going to put much on maybe a half inch and then the last step after we do that is we're just going to thoroughly wet it down and that will be it so let's spread this out and then uh, we'll just recap and we'll figure out how much time did we really spend on this here you're on oh I am yes you're on Are you sure uh-huh okay we wetted it down uh, we'll probably come back tomorrow and just kind of wet it down one more time but uh, we'll see what it's like underneath the compost is a little bit dry when we put it on so it might need overnight to soak in uh, that's it so I think totally elapsed time for us to do this whole job um, I'm going to take out 15 minutes for filming, but I think it took us a little less than an hour to plant the whole thing and uh, from start to finish, which wasn't bad. Hey, if you have any questions or comments about what we did here, I'd be glad to, uh, to hear them and uh, please leave them down below. And also, too, if you're new to the channel, um, please check out our other videos, our other playlists, or subscribe or do all of that. That would be great. Be sure to give a thumbs up for the video. And thanks again for watching. And I hope Thank you, all... you to all the new subscribers. Yeah. Thanks to all the new subscribers too. And those who left, we know who you are. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> but anyway, so I hope you all have a good day. And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.